many terms, but... your memory if I may. Sure. Do you recall in this June of 91 calling Mr. Damiano in North Carolina and saying the following to him? Hello, this is Mitch Berman. How are you? The address here is 29 and 2934 and a half Beverly Glen Circle. Suite 412, Bel Air, California, 90077. Mr. Damiano repeating it to make sure he got it correctly. You saying yes, that is correct. Do you recall that? Can I object? And uh, was this something that was turned over to us, a transcript that you're reading from? It's not a tape, <laughs> Mr. Snyder. Was it a note of a conversation that your client gave to you? Yes. Deposition's over. We're leaving. We're leaving. Let's go. We're leaving. You're saying that a That's communication right. between me and my client is discoverable? Your client obviously kept notes from 1991 of a conversation which he didn't Oh, that's an, inference. that's an inference that you're making, sir. And I would ask you... You're reading from a transcript now. I'm not looking at it, but I can tell that's what you're doing. Mr. Let's Snyder, Mr. Snyder, Mr. Snyder, you are jumping to conclusions. You're reading from a paper, right? I am reading from a confidential, and I didn't realize I had to... I'm not reading. Do this. I mean, I think there'd be some degree of no. professional courtesy no, that I wouldn't have to cover my notes. Your client's been turning over documents late. And Mr. Snyder, and we just found out documents were destroyed. So please, get off your Before high the horse. Lawsuit. Get off Before your high horse. Please. Before the lawsuit was filed, thank you. Blank pieces of paper. Before not blank, the lawsuit was not blank filed. pieces of paper. P documents that he's contending were illegible. And what are you saying right were now? not blank when they came across the facts you're, you're, line. You're, you're, and what I'm saying, sir, is, is that a communication from my client to me that he re remembers a conversation for you is grounds to terminate a deposition. I would suggest that you do this, sir. Mm -hmm. Get some air. Talk to your partner. And I mean this with all seriousness and sincerity. And tell me whether you really want to terminate this deposition. Because I say to you, if you do it, you do it at your peril, without basis, and it, it, it would be something you, I think you would regret in okay. a cooler moment. Fine. Okay? Let me ask you this. Your, your representation is that when, as you read from whatever you're reading from, your client has no notes of anything that uh, forms the basis of any of these questions? As, as I've made clear to you, I am not shy about telling you if my client has not given me something. I've made that clear to you, and you've seen that. Even when it's not to my advantage, I've done that. And you know I've done that. I know you have. Okay? And I would do, I would, the base of my would not hesitate to do that. All I can tell you is, you really all I can tell you is that if I ask my client to recount a conversation, and he does so, and his wife types it, God bless him. Right. Yeah, why Sir, can't I do you're that? Reading, you're reading, as you know, you're re it appears that you're reading something verbatim of something that happened five years ago. And when you start it's reading, a list. Of, it's word, a list of questions. When you start reading, I'm not asking <laughs> you to tell me yeah. you know. When you're reading something verbatim, word for word, about a conversation that happened five years ago, instead of saying certain substance, did you say the following? But you're literally giving with adverbs, adjectives, prepositions, word for word, asking him whether he said that, the other one said that five years ago. It gives us a moment to pause and be concerned that all he I has say notes you, of those conversations that we haven't been provided okay, with. Okay, all I can say to you yes. is that I don't have any such notes, and he's not disclosed to me that he has such notes, and I've asked him for such notes. That's all I can say Might to they you. Exist? Not to my knowledge. Can, That's all I can, what else can I say to you? you I, all I can do is ask for them. I don't, just like you don't control Mr. Dillon. Right. Right, I have only so much control over my clients, I Mr. Damiano among them. When he gave you the verbatim uh, quote that his wife typed or whatever quote typed for you, did you ask him? Now you're asking for privileged communications, well, Mr. Well, Snyder, and I'm not going to well, get into that. Ask, well, the, the obvious disadvantage of you, uh, the possibility of you giving him money to record a tape. Uh, I would say a couple of weeks before the meeting with Anthony. And he approached you, is that correct? Yeah. And what did he tell you about uh, what he hoped would happen as a result of your investment? Well, basically, it was that one song that he was 
that he really liked a lot, which is my cousin Joanne. And uh, we just believe that would be a big hit. That if, if somebody like Bob Dylan would sing that song, that would be like a, a big hit. And that was, you know, that's what got me interested. And then your wife told you that, yes, um, well, in yeah. fact, yeah, in fact, Bob, Bob Dylan is a big yes. Gentlemen, could you possibly speak one at a time? Okay. So we don't have to do this play. So, in effect, Mr. Damiano asked you to invest $10,000 in his recording project. Yes. If you knew right now that Mr. Damiano had a $200,000 CD and was living high in the hog, you'd but call him up and you'd say, From what, what I about, remember, what yeah. about my $10,000? Correct? If he didn't give it to me. But uh, if, what I remember about Jim, if he has the money, he will give it to me. And, in fact, the $10,000 investment, which you made in 1987, if you compound interest and do all and when he told you that nothing was being done is it fair to say that you became at times somewhat annoyed at the situation yeah i wasn't happy about it and what if anything did you say to mr damiano about the failure of him to turn that investment into any profit for you uh, I didn't make a case of it. All, all I remember is just talking to Jim Damiano about it. Just stay with it. Just don't give up. Keep trying. That's the thing in that nature, you know. In my mind, you got to understand, I don't even see Jim doing anything wrong. I think he produced a, re a good record. I liked it. My wife liked it. It was a good music. I still got a few tapes. I know I give some to my friends and everybody liked it. We did nothing wrong as far did nothing wrong as far as that. The, 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 the bad part of it is that I'm the one that spent the money on it and I didn't get anything back. But uh, I was convinced that this was a good decision. And at the same time, the, the, record, the, the tape came out very good. So he didn't do anything wrong. I wasn't mad at him. I was I, mad at myself. Well, sir, you said you didn't believe him and his claims about Bob Dylan listening to his music when you were in the car dealership before your meeting with Tony Tiller. That yes. was your testimony, correct? Yes. After the meeting, and after it became clear that your $10,000 is going down the drain, isn't it fair to say that your feelings of disbelief began to reemerge? Not after the meeting, after the tape, after two, three weeks after the tape was done. That's after the meeting, I was very excited. We're going to get to the meeting in a minute and your excitement. I'm now yes. taking you after the, this meeting. There came a time when it was clear that your $10,000 investment was going down yes. the, the oh, drain. Yeah. That, that sunk in. You got your American Express Platinum bill. Mm -hmm. Wham! 10000 bucks. You have to pay it all at once. So every month you're reminded oh, yeah. mm -hmm. about this $10,000 investment that had gone down the drain. And my question to you, sir, is... Was that a question? Or was that just a color commentary about every month? Is that correct? Well, not me. Maybe my wife. She pays the bills, but I just put it out of my mind. But yes, I could see what you're saying, though, but it wasn't me personally. I, I don't see You that. were aware, sir, month to month, that you had to pay the interest or whatever it is on the $10,000? Yes, I was. And my question to you, sir, is that after those three weeks, and after you started paying monthly the $10,000, your feelings of disbelief about Mr. Damiano's claims of having some connection to Bob Dylan mm -hmm. began to resurface. Are you asking him that? Or yeah, I'm asking him that. Okay. Well, if you, if you want an answer for that, I'll give you an answer. I don't think that, uh, that Jim was the one that made me, give me that disbelief. It was, it was Anthony. Um, I think Jim was just maybe lied to like I was. That's how I perceived it. I, I took him for a victim just as much as myself. Okay. If there was no connections to, to Mr. Nellen, it wasn't because of what he said to me. It, it was because of what Anthony said to me. Okay. I'm not... That, I understand that, and we'll get to that in a minute. I'm, I'm not asking getting about... At, well, I'm not asking man. about... I'm not asking... No, I'm not asking about man now. I'm asking, I'm I'm not asking getting about, at, well, I'm not asking man. about... I'm not asking... No, I'm not asking about man now. I'm asking about not believing... Not because Mr. Damiano was lying to you or not lying to you, but not believing the claim that Mr. Damiano had some connection to Bob Dylan. My question to you, sir, is whether after those three weeks 
that those feelings of disbelief resurfaced. Yes, yes, it did resurface. Or I, and I also had uh, second thoughts about maybe that just the whole thing was a scam. Okay, or the whole thing was a scam, or also that this this music just got stolen from us. Uh, it basically just went the way they wanted to go. We paid the money, and something else will happen to. It. I mean, a million things will go through your head to justify it. But, sure. but at the time, yes, I was upset. And uh, the bottom line is, we lost track of each other after that for a few years, and I just forgot about it. My specific question is um, whether, after those three weeks, you again disbelieved. Let me rephrase. After those three weeks, you again believed that Mr. Damiano really didn't have any way to get his music to Bob Dylan. No, I never believed. I never disbelieved that because I'm, I, I, I know what I heard. My wife disbelieved that. My wife told me that the whole thing was a lie. I never disbelieved that part. I, I, I believe that this music was going to Bob Dylan. I know I believed that in my heart, and I still believe it to now. Now maybe. Frank, can we take a half a second? Or that I thought about, but also I believed, you know, after a while that it, Jim, there's no possible way that Jim could have been part of that scam because we, we stayed, you know, he stayed working for me for a while after that and I, I learned more about what he was going through and it wasn't really his fault, it was my fault. Well, when you said a scam, what was the specific I mean, uh, scam that you thought um, might have been a possibility? Yeah. What, what, what kind of scam was uh, it? That scam would be something like him and and, uh, and Anthony got together and made me believe that. That could have been a scam, but I, now I, I know better. Well, because of my relationship afterwards. Sir, so the scam that you thought might be a possibility is that Mr. Damiano, wanting your ten grand, and Mr. got together with Mr. Tiller to lie to you about alleged connections with Bob Dylan to get you to invest the ten thousand dollars. Is that is that the scam that it would have been a good scam if it was done that way? But not, they didn't want the money. I didn't pay them any money. The money was paid to the record company. Uh, he wanted to record a record, and and that's you know that's all he wanted is is his song produced. The record company. You didn't pay any money to Sony or CBS. The money you paid went to the recording to the studio. recording studio. My question to you, sir, is... Sir, is... One of the things that crossed your mind three or four weeks after this meeting was that in order to get you to pay the ten grand, Mr. Tiller and Mr. Damiano may have lied to you about their alleged connections with Bob Dylan get you to pay the 10 grand. Is that the scam that crossed that's, your mind? That's one of the thoughts that came to my mind to justify what I did to myself, but I know it's not true. Well, you know it's not true. Uh, how do you know it's not true? I know it's not true because of my continuous relationship with Jim. Well, sir, you have no idea, do you, as you sit here today, mm -hmm. whether, in fact, Mr. Tiller has any contact or ever had any contact whatsoever with Mr. Dillon. Is that correct? I, I, don't, I don't know for sure. No. You, you have no way of knowing that one way or another, is that correct? No, other than other than other. the fact that Tiller told him? Yes, that's what I was going to say. Based on what he told me, he does. Now, I don't know if he really does or not, but based on... Whatsoever with Mr. Dillon, is that correct? I, I don't I don't know for sure. No. You, you have no way of knowing that one way or another, is that correct? No, other no. than other than other. the fact that Tiller told him? Yes, that's what I was going to say. Based on what he told me, he does. Now, I don't know if he really does or not, but based on his words, he does. But you know that the record went nowhere. I don't know that. Well, sir, you said you know that it wasn't a scam. But I know it wasn't a scam. But in fact, you don't know, do you? I want to turn now to this uh, meeting that you uh, said happened with Mr. Tiller. Uh, do you remember when that occurred? Your statement says July of 87. Is that about when it happened? Yeah, I believe so. And why don't you uh, tell us uh, where that meeting took place? Uh, the criticism that you've received for more or less leaving folk music for folk rock. Uh, 
hasn't seemed to bother you very much. Do you think you'll stick with folk rock, or are you going it's, on into more writing? Uh, I don't play folk rock. What I would you call play. your music? I would call it, uh, um, I like to think of it more in terms of vision music. It's uh, mathematical music. <coughs> would you say that the words were more important than the music? Uh, the words are just as important as the music. There would be no music without the words. Which do you do first, ordinarily? Uh, the words. Do you think there will ever be a time when you will paint or sculpt? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. You weren't supposed to say that. <laughs>
Saudi Arabia time to be hung as a thief? You weren't supposed to say that. <laughs>